4. The European Dark Ages The Church, being an adjunct to society and the ally of politics, was doomed to share in the intellectual and spiritual decline of the so-called European Dark Ages. During this time, religion became more and more monasticized, asceticized, and legalized. In a spiritual sense, Christianity was hibernating. Throughout this period, there existed, alongside this slumbering and secularized religion, a continuous stream of mysticism, a fantastic spiritual experience bordering on unreality and philosophically akin to pantheism. During these dark and despairing centuries, religion became virtually second-handed again. The individual was almost lost before the overshadowing authority, tradition, and dictation of the Church. A new spiritual menace arose in the creation of a galaxy of saints who were assumed to have special influence at the divine courts, and who, therefore, if effectively appealed to, would be able to intercede in man's behalf before the gods. But Christianity was sufficiently socialized and paganized that, while it was impotent to stay the oncoming Dark Ages, it was the better prepared to survive on through this long night of Western civilization, and was still functioning as a moral influence in the world when the Renaissance dawned. The rehabilitation of Christianity, following the passing of the Dark Ages, resulted in bringing into existence numerous sects of the Christian teachings, beliefs suited to special intellectual, emotional, and spiritual types of human personality. And many of these special Christian groups, or religious families, still persist at the time of the making of this presentation. Christianity exhibits a history of having originated out of the unintended transformation of the religion of Jesus into a religion about Jesus. It further presents the history of having experienced Hellenization, paganization, secularization, institutionalization, intellectual deterioration, spiritual decadence, moral hibernation, threatened extinction, later rejuvenation, fragmentation, and more recent relative rehabilitation. Such a pedigree is indicative of inherent vitality and the possession of vast recuperative resources. And this same Christianity is now present in the civilized world of Occidental peoples and stands face to face with a struggle for existence which is even more ominous than those eventful crises which have characterized its past battles for dominance. Religion is now confronted by the challenge of a new age of scientific minds and materialistic tendencies. In this gigantic struggle between the secular and the spiritual, the religion of Jesus will eventually triumph.